Hello, everyone. Welcome to NACE's first dashboard tutorial video. My name is Josh Kahn, and I'm the Associate Director of Research and Public Policy, and I will be your host slash mouse navigator for the next five minutes or so. First, let me share my screen and show you how to navigate to the dashboard, and I'm going to turn off my video so it doesn't block your view. Right? If your school participated in the survey by sending it out to your students, then you have access to the report and dashboard. If your school did not participate in the survey, you have to purchase it in the store by going to this button up here. So after you've gained access to the dashboard, navigate to My NACE up here in the top ribbon, click on that, scroll down the left side menu to research reports. Scroll down till you find the 2022 NACE Student Survey Report and Dashboard for four-year students. Click I'd like to view resources. And that will bring you to the page uh, where you can download the executive summary, the full report, and you see some information about the survey. There were over 15,000 students from 262 colleges and universities. We have a couple links here for tips, for reminders, and if you'd like to provide us with feedback. And let me pause for a second to thank our sponsor, Intern XL, for their support in conducting the research and creating the dashboard. They are doing great work in the internship space, and I think you should really check them out. If you scroll down a bit, here is the dashboard. Uh, the front tab looks just like last year. We've added a couple new tabs, and we've also added alt text on each visual for folks using screen readers. I'm gonna make this dashboard full screen so it's easier to see everything by clicking on this diagonal arrow down here in the bottom right. What's fun and really useful about these dashboards is that you can personalize all the data to your situation. In the reports, we simply don't have the room to provide all the breakdowns that members want because it just make the reports too long and cumbersome. But in the dashboards, you can engage and slice and dice the data in multiple ways. So to help orient you to the tabs, up here at the top are these buttons you can push that will bring you to different tabs in the dashboard. For example, you can click on intern conversion and it will bring you to this new page. Uh, this page focuses on different factors that influence interns' decisions to convert. You can also click on this page, Job Offers, which is new. And this page, this tab focuses on uh, links with career services and institutional outcomes, such as uh, if students believe their degree was related to their career or if they think their institution prepped them well for their career. I'm going to go back to the first tab where we will spend the rest of our time in the tutorial. Uh, to continue with the orientation beneath these page buttons or tab buttons, uh, you have the title of the page. Uh, this title will tell you what the focus is, but as well, it will indicate if the underlying data reflect uh, responses from graduating seniors or all undergraduates. Uh, next, to the data visualizations on the tab, uh, you can click on all of them except these large numbers. These are not clickable. Uh, for example, when I click on private for profit here, this bar, you'll see all the visuals change, including the numbers in the cards. Okay, the way to interpret these statistics now are to read it as or think it as of private for profit interns, 78% were paid, 59% were in person and 54% received an offer from their internship employer. You can see the private for-profit bar is a darker shade of blue, indicating that it's currently selected. To turn off the selection, you just click back on it and you'll see all the numbers return to the overall averages. Or you can click on a different bar and it will switch directly to those stats filtered by that category. So if I click on nonprofit, you'll see only 27% were paid, 29% received an offer, and 68% were in person. If you click on another visual, it will switch to filtering the results by that category. So I'm gonna directly click right onto paid, and it changes all of those stats. 
Um, so just for practice, you would interpret these stats as of paid interns, 69% were at private for profits, 56% were in person, 56% received an offer, 81% were satisfied with their experience, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna click off of paid now to get back to the overall averages. Last, these blue buttons toward the bottom are called slicers in Power BI lingo, and they let you slice the data by these different categories. The important thing to know is that as you click them, you will see they turn a lighter shade of blue to indicate that they are on. So if I click men, you'll see they received more job offers, 70% were paid, 57% were interned at a private for-profit company, and I have to click off of men to get back to the overall averages. If I click men and women, the data shown reflects uh, the results when men and women are combined. So if you only want one category at a time, then you have to remember to click to turn it off. Okay, now you can click on women and black, for example, and the data shown here reflect the data for uh, black women. Um, if you combine gender and race ethnicity, you will see the sample size will get smaller. So the last thing I wanna show you is the tool tips. You can hover your mouse over the visuals to get the sample size for that category. For example, we had 22 black women graduating seniors who were unpaid interns. Only 13 were paid. Uh, so when you combine these, the numbers will certainly get smaller. I'm gonna take black off and you will see there were 396 women that were unpaid interns, graduating seniors, and 374 that were paid. Um, but when you add another group like Hispanic or Latinx or Native American, you'll see the numbers drop significantly. Uh, if you want to see that, here I'm gonna show you Native Americans and you'll see all these dashboards, all these visuals get, get blanked out. Uh, if the sample size drops below 10, that's what's gonna happen. Uh, we designed it that way so you would not see uh, results from very, very small sample sizes. Uh, so the dashboard did not break. We mean for it to work this way so you'll only see the most result reliable results. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about navigating the dashboard. So thank you for watching, and I hope this tutorial helps you navigate the dashboard and you can spend time looking for results that will help you improve your services to students. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.